Hello, um, so now we're going to just do a quick exercise um, to see how to give you a solid example of how uh, results can change depending on the sampling technique you choose to use um, and give you an example of how uh, even professionals and economists, people like me, can make mistakes whether they are intentional or otherwise. So there was a famous paper by Reinhardt and Rogoff, which you can see on the screen now, which was called Growth in a Time of Debt. And um, what this paper argued was that essentially when government debt um, gets above 90% as a percentage of GDP, so as a percentage of the size of the economy, then growth falls um, and becomes zero essentially um, growth stops when you get when debt becomes what they view as unsustainable now this was an influential paper so it was quoted by George Osborne the Chancellor of the Exchequer um, in Parliament in here in the UK um, but and it was published in 2010 but then later in 2014 some PhD students um, who something you have to do when you're doing a PhD uh, in economics and in other subjects as well is you have to recreate a famous famous study and um, what they found was when they tried to recreate the Reinhardt and Rogoff is that they couldn't get the same results and as they said they find uh, as you can see here they found coding errors selective exclusion of data and unconventional weighting uh, which caused them to publish their own paper as a sort of rebuttal to the original ones um, uh, sort of exposing these uh, shortcomings so what we're going to do in this exercise is recreate uh, those errors uh, and therefore you can then decide for yourself whether you think this was a case of genuine mistake or purposeful misrepresentation of what the data is telling us now the findings of this study were not trivial because you know for example George Osborne used these use this study among others to justify austerity after a financial crisis which goes against sort of anything uh, that you would read in Keynesian economics um, and also went against almost all of the economic advice at the time um, and was a contributing factor to why the UK has experienced such slow recovery since the financial crisis. Now let's dive into it. So as you can see in the in the file that you should be able to see in front of you and you should have a copy of as well so you can do this yourself. Um, we've got data here for different countries, the year, uh, the debt to GDP ratio, and then the growth rate. Uh, so this is this is for more, loads of different countries from the period of around 1948 up until uh, 2009 by the looks of it. Um, so if the debt to GDP ratio is uh, less than 30%, it, it gives, you give it a score of, of one. Um, if it's between 30 and 60, it gets a score of 2. Between 60 and 90, it gets a score of 3. If it's greater than 90%, then it gets a score of 4. Now, what the recreators did, and this would arguably be the best way to do it, is all they've said is that they've just done a sort of average if, where you say, uh, if the... Um, well, let's use this with an example, so we've got 4. So if the debt category here is uh, 4, so it falls into the 60 to is then greater than 90 percent category then average the growth rate then look at the growth rates and average it so this here is the average of all of the growth rates for those years and countries where debt was above 90 percent and that gives you uh, some results whereby uh, on average when debt is below 30% economic growth is around 4.2 um, and it sort of cascades slowly downwards as debt um, increases. 
Now, I'm not going to talk about the theoretical um, justifications as to why that might be the case. Um, there's lots of sort of tricky things around cause and effect, which we can, which we'll discuss later on in the course. Um, this is just purely an exercise to to look at sampling techniques. So we're not going to talk about macroeconomics here. Um, now, what Reinhardt and Rogoff decided to do was they did the same thing as here, except for they've broken it down by country. So they've just said, not only are we looking at what uh, debt category is, but then you also look at the country. So this is, for example, the uh, all of the year. This is an average for all of the years in which debt was above ninety percent in Australia. That's the growth rate that you get if you average all of those years, and that's the same for all of these now. So it just breaks this down by country. Now the the first mistake that they make is then to get their overall results, to get the total results like we have here. Is they then average they then do an average of these so they average the individual countries now the problem with that is is that let's just take an example so say for example this 2.6 here for New Zealand say that that represents just one year there was one year in news there was only one year in New Zealand where debt was about 90% and that was the growth rate so if you take an average of just number one number it's just that one number so that's 2.6 now the UK, for example, the average here is 2.4, but say that 2.4 actually represents an average of six or seven years, or even maybe more, 10 to 15 years worth of growth rates in which debt to GDP was above 90%. Now the problem with doing an average of all of those is that you're waiting that one year for New Zealand, the same as the 10, 15 years for the UK. So that first off is the first mistake or sort of shortcoming that they make and then they, they these were their sort of first results. Now the next mistake that they make was slightly more elementary in that what they've done is the mistake that they made was quite it was just a simple coding error. So what they've done is they've gone average and I hope you can see this uh, I can't remember, I can't see what I'm doing now. And unfortunately, they have mistakenly or otherwise missed out the first few countries. So they've missed out Australia, Austria, Belgium, Canada and Denmark. And they've only worked out the average for these, these countries here. So if you copy this across, um, you'll see that we've now for above 90% we've got a a, a number 1.4 whereas before it was 1.9 or 2.2 in the first one so we're getting we're, it's getting lower and lower now the first clue that I mean I don't want to I don't want to put ideas into your head but it is a bit of a coincidence that these countries that they've missed out tend to be pretty high estimates uh, of growth so yeah so now we've got got our uh, our next level of estimates now now the next part uh, the next mistake that they make is a little more suspicious so something they choose then to do without any real justification is to exclude the countries Australia New Zealand and Canada between 1946 and 1950 they just say right we're not going to use that data um, now we won't need to delete all the data because remember um, we've already through our coding error we've already excluded Australia uh, and Canada so all you need to do is go to line 757 which is as you can see here New Zealand from 1946 to 1949 all category fours and what I want you to do is just press delete delete that data uh, and they did the same thing for Canada and Australia as well, but as I say, it won't make a difference to our results because uh, it's already been excluded through the coding error. Now, this was the final results that they published in their paper. Um, so as you can see, you now have the result that when government debt is lower, growth is fairly high, 4.1%. Whereas once it gets above 90%, the economy stops growing. 
and so the message of this paper is uh, don't let growth don't let debt get above that level implement austerity stop government spending once you get above 90 percent to gdp um now as i said um i've sort of made my view uh implicit in the way that i've been saying things but i want you to make you, you your own your own decision of whether you think these these uh weightings and sampling methods that they used were uh, a result of genuine mistake or or purposeful um, adaptation of the data all i will say is that this is an example that reminds me of a famous saying which is that there are lies damn lies and statistics thank you for listening and i'll see you in the next lecture